particular session is because it is already a, it is another great way for you to know your fellow members and in particular celebrate the achievements that you have. And, uh, you know, we don't always have GDX members of the month that have the biggest business uh, or the made the most money. There are different metrics that we take in consideration. Sometimes these people that uh, got um, that overcome something really challenging. Sometimes these people that got great results and made great sales. Sometimes these people that overcome something that was really difficult for them to get started. And we always look uh, when we do on Thursday, on the first Thursday of the month, in your monthly review and planning, we always look at what have you achieved and what have you overcome and what you have accomplished as a measure to select the GTEx member of the month. So make sure you attend your Thursday session or at least complete your assessment at the first Thursday of the month, because that's how we know how we can reward you and celebrate you. And I gotta say that with the, the person that won this month, she did something incredible. Um, she wanted to create a webinar and she wanted to create it for a while. She wanted to launch some of her services. Something happened and we had a conversation and she got, uh, she said, okay, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to create it. I'm going to set it up. And no matter how it's going to go, I'm going to go for it. And uh, I thought, Last time we checked, I think she had like more than 400 registrations from her first one of her first webinars, which is generally more than what I get all the time, like very few times I got over the 100 mark. So she has achieved something incredible, made a lot of sales from it. So we're going to also understand from her, her journey what she does, but also as well, uh, what made that possible, because we can all learn from each other. And that's the power of this particular session. So without further ado, can we please give a massive round of whoop whoops to Rika. Whoop whoop, Rika, over to you. So we are here. Let me spotlight myself as well. Um, there we go. So we are uh, Rika Manian. Uh, so Rika, uh, first of all, congratulations. Well Thank done. You. Awesome job, well deserved. Uh, you're actually fairly new in the GTEx world, so many people might not know you yet uh, as well. So let's use this um, this time to um, also have a chance to introduce yourself and, and share with people who are you and what is that you do, so then everyone has context. All right. Well, thank you, Simona. Um, first of all, I'm really honoured. I'm quite stoked um, for being selected, so thank you. I really um, appreciate that. So yeah, my name is Rika and I joined GTX in May, I think, May or June. And yeah. I came through the um, webinar conversion accelerator workshop. So here I am. Um, so I live in Finland part of the year. I live in Australia. My husband is Australian and I am a trust technique practitioner. So I teach animal owners how to use mindfulness with their animals to have a better relationship and overcome any problems, enhance their training, and just live a happy life with their animals. And I have only recently finished my qualification, and I'm at the beginning, at the beginning stages of my uh, business. So, um, and what I thought that I want to surround myself with successful people who are, you know, working, and then uplift my game as well. And here I am. And, and, and you certainly did, and you certainly did uh, straight away, actually. Um, uh, that's, that's also why we wanted to celebrate, uh, to celebrate your work. And uh, you know, we all know when, how it is like when you start something new. You know, uh, a few here are starting something completely new. Some of them definitely can remember how, what it is like to start something new. And also another part that I want to acknowledge is that actually uh, her partner now is back from Australia. So uh, uh, Rick is uh, actually using some of her precious family time to be with us this evening. So and another special thank you for, for being here with us because we all know how important family is, mm -hmm. uh, in particular when it's not as, um, as close in terms of time zone and location. Now, the uh, uh, what uh, I so I'm gonna ask a few questions, a couple of questions to Rika to get things going, and then in the meanwhile, I want you to everyone here to start thinking about one question that you can ask her and then put it in the chat. 
So start thinking about it and put your questions in the chat. We are going to be talking about webinars and what she did in that sense. But also you can ask other questions to, to, help her, to help you know her better as well. Okay, so your questions about webinars and what she did or questions about her, what she does in their work. These are the best questions to ask. And then I will pick a, a few of them to get going. Now, Rika, the first thing is um, uh, what prompt you, what was the catalyst for you to actually get that webinar done? What was the, that moment when you said, I got to go for it. I got to do this. All right. So I can be really honest with that. Um, I'm probably not the only one, but the last two and a half years have been pretty tricky. Um, I went fully into my business about a month before COVID hit. And I was at that time, I was doing body work. So you can imagine what happened. And I tried a couple of times. Um, so I've tried to get this business going many times and many times, but then I've always went back to paid work just to get my um, bills paid. And then I really wanted to do it. And I got to the point that I had to make the decision. I either go back to full-time paid work or I make this business work. And that's when I said, Simona, I don't know. I think I'm going to take the, maybe the easy route, go back to the old ways. And I loved how you, you know, I was able to go, blah, 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 I can't do that. And you see, Mona was so cool. Okay, now we're going to do a launch. We're just going to get some sales happening. I said, okay, well, let's give it a go. I've done this work. I did the workshop. My webinar wasn't ready, but I give it a go. If I get 10 people or 15 people, I get practice and maybe I get a couple of sales. And then it went a bit crazy. <laughs> so <laughs> I did... Um, it was just one Facebook post I shared into three different groups. It had over 35,000 views. I had 600 people interested, over 300 people registered, 100 people live. I did a second one on Tuesday. I got, I think about, I used a different, I didn't do it through Facebook, which is um, interesting. I'll talk about it, but I had 120 people register. And within two hours, I had made three, four sales um, after the webinar so <laughs> and 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 we all know i think for everyone that has done webinars before even if you have not done them now some most of the time it takes a, it takes one or two webinars or three webinars for me it took me more than 20 webinars to make my first sale i didn't know what i was doing so every time we see like results straight away it's also great because you can see how that methodology worked but before we go into market, uh, um, I want to stay a bit more on uh, the uh, uh, of that moment, uh, you know, because it takes courage to fully launch and to fully get out there. It takes courage, in particular when you're doing st every every single thing is something that you've not done before. Like the webinar, you've not done it before. The line course, you've not done it before. The way you were serving your, your clients and working with the dogs is not, and, and the animals is not something that you've done before. So there are so many unknowns that it's easy to say, actually, let me go back to what I know. <laughs> and no one can blame you for that. Everyone here has definitely been in that situation, myself included. Um, what did it take for you to take that step? How was that internal process that you went through? I think the biggest thing what has been stopping me is that I thought that I need to have things perfectly ready before I can start launching or before I can sell it. And now it's like, okay, I just do this one step at a time and I'll work it out and I'll work it out. And that's what I did. Um, I And I actually started, I don't have a website. I don't have an email list. I didn't even have a Zoom, paid Zoom account. So that's how it's like, okay, what's just the least what I can, the easiest way I can do is, it's like, okay, I do a Facebook event and Facebook has this amazing feature now that you can actually promote an online class. And when you make the event, people can register there and then they get all the, so Facebook did it for me. I didn't know that existed, I just tried. And yeah, then I just worked things out and I told people, okay, this is the first time I'm doing, so, um, I'm just working this out when something went a bit funny I said oh sorry that happened I'm just fixing it and here it is and I was really open about it mm -hmm. and um, yeah but yeah that things didn't have to be perfect that was a really big thing it, 
and I just do one step and then I work it out later what I do next. Yeah, we always say here, perfection is the killer of dreams. Perfection is the killer of dreams. And that's uh, something that we've always had in GTEx from the very beginning. And you have embraced uh, that philosophy, um, not being perfectionist. So I'm gonna ask Rika the last question. So in, uh, right now, I want you to start writing questions in because I need to see the questions. So I'm gonna have my last one. You start writing your questions for Rika right now in the chat. Um, now, getting three, 400 registration on webinars, getting 600 people interested is not, uh, not easy. <laughs> Anyone that has done webinars before can say that. And in one way, you've been spoiled. Because having that as a first result, uh, I'm thinking, damn, I wish I had that. Like literally. <laughs> so what made that possible? What did you do? So you mentioned that you created the event. So let's go a bit more in where you went to share that, that event and how did it take traction? So let's talk a bit more about that part. Okay. Well, first of all, one thing what I've, what I've done, I've done a fair bit of, let's say, mindset work. And one thing about my work is to have a strong purpose to help. And that's what I was kind of, I was not focusing on, I need to make sales. I was focusing on, I want to help people. So that was kind of my intention I worked with as well. And that helped me, helped me, took the pressure off. It's like, okay, I just want to talk about it. And if there's someone I can help, please let them come to me. What was your question again? <laughs> and, uh, so how, the, in terms of the registration, so what, how did you get so much traction? So you said the first, the first part is that having that intention. So almost like letting go of how many registration I'm going to have, how many sales I'm going to make and be there uh -huh. with the spirit to serve. It's like, if I can have someone, I can help. Exactly. And what else did you do? So then what I did, I created the Facebook event and then I did write one post, I think. And I kind of used one of the templates from the um, workshop but I mostly wrote it from my heart. And what I did is that I shared it to three different groups. One was positive horsemanship on Facebook. One was a dog discussion. And the third one was a female entrepreneurs. And there in the female entrepreneurs, I wrote it in a way that I'm looking to network and connect with other professionals in my field so we can share each other's work and I because I need people to refer other people to and what happened there when I was doing my qualifications I did free sessions to other professionals I had a vet I had an osteopath I had a couple of dog trainers and they all came in and recommended my work and one of my colleagues is one of the biggest positive horsemanship influences and they all recommended my work. So it started getting that social traction and then Facebook liked it and showed more to more people. And it was all coming from, because I've decided I want to cooperate, network with as many people as I can. And there's no competition. And one mindset thing I have that even if I give, if I help someone for free, it will come back to me many fold. And, uh, and and that's what happened. I like uh, I like to see the patterns and the, how things get connected. So there is on one side the detachment from the outcome. That's that's the beginning point. That's the starting point. Then we are going into creating something that uh, yes, you follow the templates. And for everyone who needs to look for them, is uh, either inside the webinar conversion kit or inside the webinar mania course, which is uh, as part of your membership. Uh, is uh, also making that template yours. And that's a big key. Of course, templates are there to guide you and are there to give like help trigger, but start making it yours and sharing your experience and use that as a guideline. And that's what you do because then people will resonate with you and your word. And then I can see also how the work that you did when you started getting your qualification, when you did your pro bono session is actually paying off now. And it's important to recognize in those moments because a lot of time we lose track of what is the thing that actually happened that happened years ago that I'm getting rewarded for right now 
or that is paying off right now. And uh, because you have endorsement, then many people, more people were interested and more people are interested and the algorithm gets uh, even more views and uh, shares it to even more people that are in that category. And that's how you ended up outside your network. So this is a great strategy for everyone who is here to try is to start, uh, you have a public uh, Facebook event, uh, which I'm assuming you did it from your business page. Yeah, I did it on my business page and I actually did the webinar on Zoom. So then I posted the Zoom link there, but Facebook did all the registration part for me. And then it also created a messenger group automatically. I did not know that happened. Mm. But then <laughs> where, because I don't have an email list, I didn't have people's emails. I didn't even know how to do an email list. So it's like, mm. okay, I don't worry about that. But then suddenly there was a messenger group. So I can send a replay to the people and then I can remind them, oh, there's another one coming up or if you want to grab the offer, here it is. So. Yeah, I have got one last question now and I'm going to start asking, which is a more technical one. Uh, is that uh, when you re people register on Facebook, do you get also their email as part of the registration process? Or can you download it or not at all? No. Okay. I don't do I don't do emails, so. <laughs> oh, no, not yet. No, not, not yet. yet. Not yet. Not like yet. I will, that's something I will, that we are going. Yeah. We are going. That's something that we are going to talk next on. Yeah. Uh, is important to have those emails. Yeah. Really, yeah. really important. But yeah. that comes next. You know, mm -hmm. the the first step is just to go ahead and try things, and then you revise, you review the process uh, as we go along. Then we can add the emails. Then we can add things. Uh, and uh, a lot of time we just wait for things to be perfect until we understand how to use everything. Yeah. Um, and that's uh, actually, um, which also I think you made so far, you mentioned like 17, 17, 18 sales, something like that. I think 17 at the moment. And what is amazing is that I got invited. So we are do, we're going for a holiday around Finland and I have work along the way. So I have seven different cities where I've been invited to teach and people, one person is hosting a, a talk and another person wanted to, it's up in Lapland, so it's quite far away. I say if there's enough people, so she started organizing people together. And now there's five or six people waiting for me to travel up there and teach. And you know. Awesome. And that's also Brilliant. the other, the, that's the, the collateral. Like, and that's why it's important to show up and deliver presentations, because sometimes you might not get a client directly, but someone sees you, they like your content and they say, hey, I would love, can you do this for my group? Or, hey, I've got a client, can you help me out with this? I received uh, um, a, someone connect, contacting this morning and say, hey, I've watched a few of your webinars and uh, I've never engaged with you, but I've got this client in Japan that actually could be a perfect fit for an online course that we can create. It's not my area of expertise. I like what you've been saying over the years. Uh, I would love to see if we can do something together. Now, I don't know if that's going to go anywhere. We had the first conversation, we liked the project, and then we are going to see. But that's also the other external benefit of keeping showing up and importance. When we talk about the importance of visibility and importance of showing up, these are all the other things that are happening. So I'm going to start now looking at the, some of the questions. Um, and uh, Fluffy said, uh, Erika, how did you get over your fear of launching a new and unusual thing and being seen? Um, well, I've given, so the basis of the talk I've given twice before. First of all, I used to be terrified of public speaking, absolutely terrified. I could even in a Zoom like that, my heart would be pounding to say something. So, but what I have learned when I am an expert, I am an expert in my area in this. So I can talk till the cows come home. So <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. And I know that whatever question comes up, I know what to answer. Or then I, do, I also know what I don't know. So first of all, I was confident with my topic. And secondly, I'm just being myself. I am not trying to um, present or be anyone else. But getting over fear of launching something new, I this is what I love the most in the world. 
I love doing what I do. I would do it for free. I would do it all day long for free, help animals, do consultations. So the more I get to talk about it. And years ago, I had someone who told me when I was just wanting to start out, just talk to everyone about what you do. Mm. Just start yeah. talking. I get used to talking about it and you find the words and you find it's getting more like the little introduction I did, how to explain. It has taken me probably a year to work out how to use 30 seconds to explain what I do. But then the more I talk about it, the easier it gets. Yeah, love it. Uh, great lesson here. Keep talking about what you do. You never know. You never know who you're talking to. And you. And every time you talk about it, as Rika said, you have uh, you, you learn a different aspect about yourself and you refine the way you are saying it. There is a question from Latoya, uh, which says, uh, "Did you uh, you mention already that you did your you already did your second webinar? Um, how so? What was the gap in between? That's a, one additional question that I ask. Mm -hmm. Then, what were your results on the second one compared to the first one? So, I think the second one I did three weeks after the first one, and the reason being is that I started to get those." Um, requests to travel and teach. So I wanted to fill in more of those days. Um, so there was less, you know, it didn't go as crazy, I would say. Like I shared it to the same groups and I said, oh, I did this webinar three weeks ago. It was really successful. If you missed it, here's another one and register here. Now this time I didn't get as many because now I've got a software for the webinar. So where people go in the register and I got their emails and all of that. So I had about 120 people um, registered this time, but there was a technical glitch. Um, I had 29 people live and, but then I found out later that some people, the email link was not working. So they, I didn't have time to test it all, unfortunately. And then I was like, okay, that's fine. Some people are coming in. I didn't know how to, software works and I didn't have time to test it but it's okay I trust it is going to be fine but then I wrote a really nice email afterwards and apologized about it and did a recap what we talked about and then sent the um, replay out about 24 hours 24 hours later and yeah I'm getting some sales there was an, a previous client who I worked with earlier this year who got back to me called again um, some people who didn't make it the first time registered this time. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think sales-wise, sales -wise, it was probably at least as successful this time. So less people, but successful in terms of sales-wise as, as, as the other one. I think also sometimes like the platform that you use is sometimes makes a difference. And uh, um, what uh, you will find for everyone is going to use webinars, uh, and or is using webinars, uh, you have uh, an idea that you have might have one with a lot of registrations that doesn't give you not, a lot of sales. And you might have one with like four people registered that you might be thinking, oh, why bother to do it? And maybe those four people or four of them, they become clients and they buy. Sometimes I had some of the more successful webinars with the least attended. Now, I'm not saying, of course, the, the, the chances are that the more attendees you have, the more chances you're going to have to get a client. That's statistics, right? It's math. But don't discard also webinars that you will have a lesser registration or less attendees because it's more about the quality of the person and where the person is at that is going to watch. So your role is to show up. You do your thing. And then the right person will show up for you as well because you are there. Um, there is a question from Angie. Uh, you said you use Facebook. Uh, where else did you promote? Was it just on Facebook or did you promote it other other places? Nowhere else, just Facebook, nothing just else. Facebook. Yeah. That was yep. enough. Um, question from Genevieve. How did you decide on pricing? Um, so I was one of the lucky ones when I did my accelerator. Um, workshop that I got a review session with Simone. Um, but at the same time, I did give quite a nice discount. It's still um, okay what I charge, but I did um, give a nice discount just to get sales happening and get more of that um, 
you know, get uh, testimonials and uh, get more experience as well. And what what so, was the, what um, the price? You can also say you can also say the price that you, yeah. you, you charge. So I'm I'm selling uh, three sessions for 197 euros. My normal pricing will be 350. And, um, yeah. And that's and that's brilliant going in particular when you're launching something new. You know, like we did with GTEx, and like we have a lot of people. You start you start lower and then you increase. As you go, you start lower the first time you launch, and then you increase the second time, and you increase the third time, and increase the fourth time. Because at the end of the day, people are buying. Let them buy. <laughs> so, yep. Yeah. So that's about the attachment of how it's supposed to be priced. I I want we want to make it easy for people to buy, and then you will find at a point that it will be easier for them to buy the higher price point. It will be easier to buy the higher price point. Uh, let's and what's what's happening there as well? What um, I'm creating this kind of healthy FOMO um, because I have only a very limited days that I can travel, and also I'm going to back to Australia in uh, beginning of November. So what I'm wanting to, what I'm kind of launching at the same time is like, okay, I come to you for the first session, and then the followers will be online. I haven't done a single online <laughs> session yet. <laughs> But I'm gonna learn as I go, and I know I can deliver it. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, awesome. Uh, question from Claire: uh, Content-wise, was your webinar more information? So, were you providing more information, or did you open it up for attendees to participate in activities and interaction? So, was it more like workshop style where they were interacting, or more informative? Uh, it was an information. Yeah, it was an information talk about. So trust technique, I'm in a very um, lucky position, again, bit of FOMO or scarcity. Um, trust technique is getting a lot of traction here in Finland. I have a colleague who has the most popular horse podcast and she has talked a lot about it and she can't take any more clients. So there people know the term. So I'm already, I don't have to start from the beginning. There's quite a, but a lot of people don't know what it is. There isn't a lot of information available so that's what I gave. It was it was about an hour of me talking and a lot of examples and photos and jokes and I tried to make it funny and light. Um, so yeah, and I got really good feedback. I'm amazed how good feedback I get because I don't prepare a lot and people say, oh, that was so clear and that was so informative and thank mm -hmm. you. And I got really good feedback. So. Yeah, awesome. So we have uh, we have uh, done all the questions uh, that we had here from uh, from the members, and I would love to wrap up with uh, uh, actually to recap. Uh, you know, I think there are a lot of lessons that we can take. I'm definitely taking one is uh, not waiting up until we have everything perfect before we start a Facebook event and a Zoom link. Who would have thought, right? Secondly, is uh, the importance of showing up. And importance of being there, even if uh, you don't know how everything is going to work out, even if you don't know how the technology is going to work, to still giving it a go and do it. Uh, the amount of times at the beginning we we had ish tech issues happening on the webinars and so on, but at least we were there, and then we can send people the replay, and so on. So that was important. The fact that you learned and improved as well from the first to the second webinar, because the first webinar you couldn't have uh, email addresses and so on, but now the second is like okay. I'm now collecting email address. I'm now collecting registration. So there is the improvement that you made from one to the other. And also the, the other part, which is uh, um, the tapping into other networks, because this is the biggest thing. Our audience, unless we are an influencer, unless we have a huge audience, is limited. Right? And the, the goal and the gold is in other people's group, other people's audiences, but make sure that it's relevant. Just become the spammy one. The, what, the reason why, if you're looking at the reason why for Rika she had so much traction is because the topic was relevant for that group, but also she had the relationship with people in that group that were able to vouch for her. So think about it in terms of your strategy and actually conscience depending it. If there is a group that you want to be part of, build relationships with people. Do some, maybe some exchange work with them so they can, uh, they can experience your work. So then when you're going to promote something, they can vouch for it. Even without thinking, uh, I, I've done this uh, a few times with webinars where if I want to go into a community and teach them how to do webinars, I will work with the owner of the community for free and say, 
hey, let me build your webinar. I'll give you my time. We'll build something together. You get the results. And then if you like it, you endorse me to your community. I know that in that case is a very strategic activity because I do one thing that can potentially put me in front of hundreds of thousands of people. So it's giving, it's creating win-wins. But if you look at this, what happened with Rika, that's, that's the lesson there. So uh, the, the final question that I have for you, Rika, is uh, from here now, what are you taking away with you from this experience that uh, has transformed now the way you approach business? Um, so I think earlier I would have just rested on my laurels and <laughs> then wondered a month later why I don't have any sales again. So straight away, I started thinking, okay, I follow up my leads, I build businesses, what I'm gonna do next? And I improved. I worked on my presentation to make it better, to have um, have a better pitch. And now again, I'm next thing what I'm I'm filling up those days when I'm traveled, the coaching and my schedule until I go to Australia. And the next thing is I'm going to start promoting to Australia. So I'm going to start having, so my webinar wasn't finished. The so next I'm going to start having webinars in English to start building up my audience. So I have a waiting list when I arrive to Australia. Awesome. This is an incredible approach. <laughs> And thank you very much for sharing your insights. Thank you for your time here with us. Um, and uh, the great results. Congratulations for the great results that you have. Well, well, well done. Can everyone please give Rick a massive round of whoop whoops here? This has been a, a great, a great uh, um, member of the month. Uh, in this case, July 2022. Uh, thank intro. you. So well thank done. You, thank Simone. you, Rika. And I want to thank you, everyone in GTEx, because I would have I would have not got here without you. And for me to share that, okay, I had a really bad week and I wanted to give up, and everyone cheering for me and being part of the family. So thank you. Yeah, this is really really important. Thank you for everyone who showed up for Rika. So what I want you to do now, uh, while we are setting up the next activity, yeah, I want you to take some to write in the chat what is that you personally, everyone here, that you personally got out from uh, this interview. How your would you do business differently, or maybe some reminders that you get from what Rika shared. So please uh, start writing in the chat, and uh, I am going to in the meanwhile set up the next activity.